welcome to Anson Griffith's vocation series of YouTube tutorials in MATLAB. Today we're looking at strings in MATLAB and it's fairly simple stuff but that said we're going to go as slowly as we can with the aim of giving the student a fair idea of how to uh, use strings in MATLAB. So we have a table of contents made up here in our Word document. Let's go down. So we're going to be using formatted output strings, mainly using fprintf. So here we're using printf and we say to five decimal places minus 32 and the result is minus 32. fprintf 12.6. So what does that mean? We will print up to 12 spaces before the decimal point, 6 afterwards, and the number we're trying to print is minus 1 over pi. So we get minus 0, and there we have the number printed out correct to 6 decimal places. Here we have a scientific notation, so 14.60, so E means scientific notation. The number we're trying to print, minus 1 over pi, and there we have it, minus 3.189 e to the minus 1. Same number as there, just this is fprintf, so we're printing it as a decimal, and this is for printing scientific. A string, hello world, now hello world is 5, the space is 6, and another 5 is 11, and we're saying print 14 spaces, and the first few spaces there are blank, and then we have the next 11. A percentage, how do we print a percent? Return equals... 5.2f we say percent percent and the number we're trying to print is 6.8 and we get this we'll see this working and then we use fprintf a string and we're trying to print the slash n is the new line bhp and then we're trying to print uh, the number 40.93 is a float up to five numbers before the decimal place and two afterwards. So let's have a little look at that. So there we have it in MATLAB. And I ran it without the new line, without the slash n. So you see there we get all the numbers as I described before in the Word document on one line. And what's happened on this line here is that we've just run out of space and we've gone on to the next line. Now, we want to put a separate line between each. I did it slowly. So there's our placeholder, five decimal places minus 32. And then after that, I do a slash n, an fprintf slash n, and that winds me on to the next line. So we get minus 32 from there. The slash n winds me on to the next line. Print 12.6f, yeah, 12 numbers before the decimal place, 6 afterwards, minus 1 over pi, we get minus 0 0.38310, and this slash n here will wind me on uh, to a new line, etc. So that's okay. Now, exercise 1, let's just go back here. Define three variables and, and make sure that the prompt is at the beginning of a new line after printing. So we want to print walk is 9 on one line, mass is 1.45 uh, tons, and DIT is 6.45 seconds. So let's have a look at that. I've defined the three variables and now I put the slash n in with the walk. So print two numbers before the decimal place, comma slash n. So the slash n will wind me on to the next line, the variable walk. So we do that, we get nine. Next one here, 10 numbers before the decimal place, two afterwards, um, tons, the slash n and the mass. And the mass is 1.2 e to 7. So we get 1.2 e to the 7. And that drops in there in that placeholder. And then we get tons afterwards. Here, DIT is 6.45. 
So the 4.2F, the DIT drops in there, so that'll give me 6.45 seconds, and the slash N will wind me on to the next line. Now, number to string, as you would imagine, number to string, we're converting a number to a string. And then we're going to print out that using, um, we're going to print that out. So there we are. Walk, remember, is a number, 6.45. Number to string, converted to string. Inside the square brackets would all be a string. So results for walk. And the string version of walk is 6.45. Now, remember, it's not the number 6.45. It's just the string. So results for walk 9. Let's look at exercise 3. Use sprintf. So sprintf is a um, string print, print format. So we're printing, not flow print format, but we're using string print format. Results for run, and we're printing it to three numbers before the decimal place, walk. So we just get nine there as above. But remember, we're using S print of string print format. Exercise 3a is all about comparing strings. So STR, CMP stands for string compare, and we're going to compare this string with that string. And we're also going to use the double equals, because remember the double equals is used to test for equality for numbers, and we're going to see what happens when we use it for a string. So we defined S1 as heat, S2 as heat there, except the first letter is capital H, string compare. Now, obviously, these two are not the same because uppercase H is not the same as lowercase H. It doesn't matter that the other three are the same. It fails. So the answer there, that's the answer from string compare. That's zero, and zero means false. So we're saying they're not the same. And when we use the double equal, the test for equality, we get four answers. So why do we get four answers? It's comparing it character by character. Lowercase h is not the same as uppercase h, so we get zero. Lowercase e is the same as lowercase e, so we get a one. This one here, lowercase a is the same as lowercase a, and then the same for the t. Exercise 3b is about converting from uppercase to lowercase. And lower and upper are the commands. So we're going to create the string then to rugby. We're going to convert it to uppercase, convert it to lowercase. So there's my string length to rugby. The command is upper, so we're going to make every single character uppercase. Hence to rugby. And then we're going to convert the uh, Leinster rugby all to lowercase by using the lower command. And when we look at that down there, we get Leinster rugby, and that's all lowercase. Exercise 3C is about combining strings. So you can use square brackets to combine strings. So we want to add the word, or words for that matter, or the string of characters, Jonathan Sexton, uh, in front of Leinster Rugby. So we want to combine the strings. So how do we do that? Square brackets, single quotes, the string of characters, close single quotes, the original string, and the original string is str3. And remember, str3 is there, Leinster Rugby. So when we run that, we get Jonathan Sexton, Leinster Rugby, together as one string. Exercise four is all about writing to file. 
Let's just have a little look at what we're asked to do. So you have to open the file name, print the three variables. You have to open the file. Explain how to do that in a second. And we want to print the three variables that we described at the beginning. What are they? These guys. We want to walk, walk. We want to write those three to file. So FID is shorthand for file identifier. So you use the command F open. The name of the file, which I've brilliantly called my file.txt and what we're doing here is we're writing to file so we're going to we want to give permission to the write to the file my file.txt so f print f file print sorry file print and we're printing using the identifier so we're going to write to my file.txt and we're going to put in a heading here write variables to file and the slash n will wind me on to the next line. I want to write walk to file at the number it represents. So remember, write to where the file identifier, which is my file.txt, as a float, and we're going to write the variable walk. F print F to where the file identifier, which is my file.txt, and we're going to um, print the variable mass. And then finally, we're going to print DIT. So remember, DIT there is going to go in to that placeholder there, present F, and the slash N will just wind you onto the line. We're going to close the file. And then finally, 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 we're going to see, just to check that everything right, we're going to type my file.txt just to see that everything went there. And if we follow those commands, you see that we did. Hope that helps. Hope that helps a little. And thanks very much for listening.